Hi everyone, welcome back to Can Can Talks. This is episode two. two. Um, it's Lily and Jules, and uh, we're going to start this episode off with some announcements. It's going to be a recurring thing each week where we just kind of tell you guys what's going on with the Rouge. So Jules, want to start us off oh. with announcements? Let's start with a big one. The Derek Klenna is coming back to Moulin Rouge. Oh my goodness. February 6th, he will be back. And we are very excited to have him back. Um, also, joining the Rouge, we have a brand new swing as well. Brand new swing. De- Debria is starting as a new swing on Moulin Rouge. And Alexa Debar is returning. So excited to see people return. However, unfortunate news. Casey Cop, Liv, David Marino, and Eric Anderson all leave in two weeks. I don't think I'm ready for that. I'm not ready. I'm also, not ready either. Happy Jail are- shows are... They're a lot. They're a lot to take in. Um, they are um bittersweet because it's such a fun show but then it's like because it's a final time um speaking of final shows australian production it's currently in melbourne has two weeks left too yeah that's it and they're done um they've been going since like 2021 and that's it hopefully it gets picked up again in a few years but that cast is brilliant um also today we're recording this tyler left today as well that was a very sad moment for us um but happy trails for now you never know what's going to happen with the rouge we'll always mm-hmm. come back anyway let's get into today's episode wait hold on before we get into today's episode <laughs> um i went to the art museum today um in my hometown and i got a music box and <laughs> It plays the can can song. Um, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to hear it, but I'm just gonna play it just in case because I just think it's hilarious. So love it. Okay. <laughs> So, I hope they can hear it because I definitely cannot. Uh yeah. You might not have been able to hear that. I'll maybe dub it in. <laughs> <laughs> Just dub it in. That would be great. Um, so today's episode, we are going to be doing some comparisons. We are going to be talking about the Broadway musical compared to the 2001 movie. And Throwing this in as a little twister, just because I recently watched the Boston production of Moulin Rouge and previews, we're going to add in a little bit about Boston versus Broadway. So I think we should start with the movie. Um, We got a few questions that we're going to kind of ask each other and talk about which one we prefer more. So number one, love this one, Lily. Yeah. Which scenes are better Ooh. um well in the movie i know you said uh your song last episode mm-hmm. and i definitely agree with that um i think that it's just more cinematic i know i talked about this last episode but it is honestly more cinematic um you can use a lot more with the camera and editing and uh yeah i just i like that i also really like roxanne um i pref- i think i prefer like the song better um in the movie or broadway in the broadway but performance wise i prefer um the movie again cuz cinematography um and just the dramatic side of it mm. <laughs> even though like it's just, oh, I mean, whoever plays Nini right now, it's Sophie Carmen Jones, but just absolutely kills it at the dancing. Um, they go all in. Um, 
But yeah, I, I think, I don't know. I just like Ewan McGregor and uh, his voice and just the dramaticness and just the way that it's all directed and the way that it's edited and clipped in. You don't get that on Broadway, but I also really do like the Broadway version because I think you just also get a little bit more of the acting part because like you don't have those dramatics there, you know, that you can get with editing and cinematography um and like you said i like the pitch song better um in the broadway show because it's hilarious <laughs> it's just so funny so going back to your roxanne one um because i also have a question about song choices yeah i think roxanne is at such a big pinnacle moment in the show whether you're watching the movie or if you're watching the broadway show it's such a big moment and um both of the scenes i think i but i just love both of them like watching it in the movie and the dance is going on and he's walking to go find the teen and even in the broadway when he walks across the stage like it's just it's phenomenal but scene you know i really love um i really love the come what may scene in the movie when they're you know it's so, so much is happening in the background and mm -hmm. her with the duke and all this and my favorite quote is from the duke is oh look a little frog <laughs> that's my favorite but i think there's definitely um so much to compare i think i really like the also right at the end when satine gives her performance mm -hmm. so I do admit I do like the movie one. I feel like the movie one just has a bit more um I mean it's difficult on stage because with you know sets and stuff, it's very big, it's very flamboyant, you know, the one on um in the movie. I mean the Broadway one is sweet and it's I feel like it's a bit more serious, but um it's um it leads me into my next question that and we talked a little bit about this last week and you just spoke about it about what song choices are better um i know you said that you wish like a virgin <laughs> was in the broadway production yeah um i just don't I know why I don't, I don't i mean i think i i mean i like like a virgin i'm not exactly sure if i like the like the version that his song it or he doesn't really sing it he kind of speaks it <laughs> in the movie um but i just think that the, i mean i might be just kind of taking the actors it just like running with it because i would love to see like david harris or tam or dylan <laughs> sing like a version by madonna but i think that they do they do it justice with only girl in the world by just putting in that rihanna song and making it all about him it is it, it always gets laughs it's hilarious do you know what i just don't love it i don't love like a virgin i just the only good cover of like a virgin i like is from glee when jonathan groff and all that did it why uh, did i know you were gonna say that little glee reference for everybody <laughs> if you watch glee you would know the whole episode about madonna was definitely one of the best episodes oh. i think glee ever did it's so uh, and if you haven't watched it please go watch it after you finish listening um yeah no i think i i mean we spoke about your song you know um i i wish and i like firework but i really love one day i'll fly away yeah that one was just such a um obviously they substituted in the broadway show for that they put firework instead and firework's great and i do love firework but I, I really i remember when i was younger and i watched a movie i just thought one day i'll fly away it was so sad and it was so like raw and you know as you get older you realize what it's more about but i think um that's like a split tie what do you think of this is a good question because the Duke doesn't really have a song in the movie except for Like a Virgin. And he so, speaks it. <laughs> and he speaks it. So he what do you think about him having something like Sympathy for the Duke in Broadway? Do you think it gives the character more depth? I think it does. Um, I mean, 
it's it's weird because like in the movie the duke is literally just he's very silly um and he's not that attractive he doesn't really have game he's just rich He does not have any game he in doesn't the movie. know how to raise anyone up <laughs> we had that discussion on facetime um how to raise someone up or what it means I just learned what raising someone up meant. I just want everyone to know that. <laughs> I only learned from Lily like two days ago. <laughs> um yeah he doesn't have any rules he doesn't have game um <laughs> at all so having the duke like making him have game it does have add a little bit more depth but i think to the character but also to the storyline because now satine is not just battling just money versus love it's literally like these two very attractive guys who have very they're very charming in their own way you know the duke is very smooth krishna is very adorable um and i remember even my dad when we saw the show for the first time my dad didn't know the difference between christian and the duke until later on because he knew like he was like oh tam and aaron are both very attractive people <laughs> so <laughs> yeah i think He's it adds so more real depth for that. honestly <laughs> yeah you know, there's also one more song I wish was in the show. Um, I really loved The Show Must Go On. Um, classic song, great song, made famous by Queen, and then put into the movie. I think that is... I think Crazy Rolling kind of makes up for that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, personally for me... that is all the songs I think are better or that I wish were in the new show. Um, I think the show, the, the songs in the Broadway show are great. I don't have one that I like, don't like. Um, trust me, at the sing-along, I was singling, singing along to as many as I possibly could. Um, and I will again in August when I go. Um, is that Is that all your songs for you, Lily, or do you think you have anything else? I think that's pretty much it. I just also want to add, like, One Day I'll Fly Away and The Show Must Go On. Both of them drive the plot um, very well from the movie. But, you know, I think as we learned from, well, at least Mean Girls, um, which I saw, um, you know, Broadway show adaptations and just other adaptations, um, they might be a little different. And uh, especially with movies to stage, Um, sometimes they have to be different because, I mean, as much as I would love to see, like, the, the chase between Christian and the Duke, um, I don't know how that would have been possible. Um, so, uh, other than, like, just safety, <laughs> safety issues and stuff. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that they drove the plot, and especially One Day I'll Fly Away, um, as far as, like, Satine's personal kind of feelings um i think firework does the trick but one day i'll fly away just a little bit more really like it solidifies how she's feeling and it kind of foreshadows stuff as well for the end obviously so spoiler alert if you've not seen the Irish, <laughs> the movie um no i completely agree i think it's such a big pinnacle moment in the show um but then also i read that apparently when they were doing the I, i have no idea if this is true or not i just it's speculation but um maybe they couldn't get all the rights to all the songs um so maybe that's why not or also they were trying to make it more modern day because obviously the movie came out in 2001 the broadway production started in 2019 so that's like what 17 18 years later yeah well if you go to boston so 17 years later um maybe they were trying to update some of the songs so maybe it was more of a they were like we don't want to completely copy the movie but we want to you know have the same vibe Mm -hmm. so and they do that a lot with the mashups as well when they mash mm -hmm. up like a lot of different songs like bad romance and toxic by britney spears so it's a great so my next question is what would you like to have been left in to the broadway from the movie i think we kind of just answered that one about like what bits and scenes we would have loved to have yeah kept in you know what there is actually one scene i think i would have loved to have had um 
if you've seen the movie, you know, but there's a scene in the movie where Satine is going to come visit Christian one night and Satine has an episode of her consumption and she passes out and she doesn't go see him mm-hmm. and he's like really upset about it um it's been a little bit since i've seen the movie a few months i think actually it's been longer than a few months but <laughs> <laughs> so i can't fully remember off the top of my head but it's something like that i feel like that could have been really good to have that in again it's timing as well like you you can't have the Broadway show being like four hours long, you know. So it's again fitting it in, but I do like those scenes. Like they had that, and you see Christian get angry. Um. So it's uh, I think that's one of the um things I would have liked to have left in. Yeah, I think that would have been really interesting as well. Um, because. You know, it just it just adds more it adds more depth to the story you know and uh for especially for her illness um it's like we see little like small little things but it it really only becomes like super serious when she dies in the end um so to have her like actually like you know pass out from from it but you know still be alive um you know it's it doesn't feel like it's I don't know how to explain this. Um, I guess, like, it it makes it a little bit more of a serious issue, which, I mean, it is, because, I mean, she's literally dying of an illness. And they try to, I know they try to do that with the amount of blood that's being coughed up on stage um, in the handkerchief. But, yeah, I feel like that that would have been, it would have added a lot of dramatics to it. All about the drama. (laughs) So, um... Overall, comparing the two, what makes both of them so iconic? Like, what makes a movie and Broadway so iconic to you? For me, I think it's, well, first of all, the time. Um, you know, the, the um, era that it's in. Um, 2001, iconic. Um, iconic songs. Um, and same with the 2019 uh, Broadway show you know they modernized it um, and they made it more accessible to you know people in today's time like our age um, and they also you know they added a Rolling Stones medley and they added some other songs in there that um, that are also a little bit past I guess the uh, the target audience's time um so you know it's really for everyone but i think it, it's the story um i'm so, so sorry my friend liz just sent me something oh. really funny i apologize i apologize please please keep going wait is that... i think i just saw i just opened the message it's the whole script <laughs> oh my god <laughs> love um we love you liz <laughs> and julia um no but uh i think overall it's just it's iconic because of the love story the story overall and the way that it uses pop music and popular music to tell a story to tell a love story um you know it's like when you think of these pop songs as just single songs um and its own entity you don't really think about oh, like, this is about this, or, you know, you don't really think about the story behind it. Um, whereas, like, well, I'll, I'll give an example for the Broadway show, like, Crazy Rolling. Who would have ever thought that Crazy mashed up with Rolling in the Deep is about what it is in the Broadway show and how it works so well together. So I think that's why it's so iconic, other than just the story in general. It's a love story. I mean, come on. <laughs> No, I agree. Um, I think for me, what makes it so iconic is, well, the movie festival um, came out in 2001 and nothing like that had really been done, I don't think. Um, I mean, Baz Luhrmann has done like Romeo and Juliet, which is another great movie. He also did The Great Gatsby, which, spoiler alert, is coming to Broadway in April. That's my favorite version of the movie. Uh, phenomenal. Um, Think whatever but, you want about Leonardo DiCaprio, but 
that movie is elite. It's so good. Phenomenal. I do love that movie. Um, but I think that had like never been done before. And you watch the movie, it's such a I know it's sad and it's tragedy, of course, it's depressing. Um <laughs> it's still fun. There's so much fun in it and it's different and it's just you know, there's so much I've noticed this with Baz Luhrmann's films. I've seen so many of them. He's so like extra. He just has so much like stuff in it. And um I think that's what just makes it amazing. And it's just a sweet story as well. And it's there's funny parts and um I think with the Broadway show as well, what makes it so iconic is again the same thing. It's so much fun. Yes, it's sad and serious at some points, but it's also it's funny and it's you know, I've seen people's reviews of Moulin Rouge who've never seen it before. Like, their first time going and then they review the show. And people so much put how just in awe they are of all the work that goes into it. I mean, the opening number itself is, what, eight minutes long? Yeah. And it's just phenomenal. And I think it's stuff like that. And even, like, the Act 2 opener is still one of my favorite Act 2 openers of all time. Um, I think that's what makes it iconic is the hard work and the magic that goes on. You know, the moment you walk into the Al Hirschfeld, it's just you're transported. I think we spoke about this last week that you're transported mm-hmm. into like Paris, eighteen ninety nine, and it's just a whole different world. So I think that's what makes them both really iconic. And I love them both. Um, I know everyone's got opinions, and some people don't like the movie, but I personally love the movie and the music. I think Baz Luhrmann does, just in general, does a great job with just implementing modern stuff into a time period, like Romeo and Juliet. Uh, You know, he made it very modern day. Um, Milan Rouge is obviously, I mean, modern music and the turn of the century, um, 1900s, you know, just, uh, stuff like that. And even in Great Gatsby, you know, you got a, you got a Jay-Z song at one of Gatsby's parties. So, I mean. Oh my God. <laughs> the Great Gatsby soundtrack, the movie soundtrack is. The Lana Del Rey song. Mm. It's so good. It's so good. Um, what was truly amazing if you've never heard ashley loren's cover of that song you need to look up ashley loren's cover of young and beautiful when she was in vegas i'm gonna go look it up after we record do it so um moving on from the movie compared to the broadway so i recently watched the boston preview again um it's been a while since i'd watched it and i was like you know i i forgot about some of these things that happened um I didn't see it in Boston unfortunately but I remember watching it the other day and I was like wait a second I forgot about this I remember texting Lily I was like we need to we talk about this and I was texting her stuff so um I want to just move on and talk a little bit about that it's been six no five years since it was in Boston what's insane um time flies when you're having fun I mean no, it's no, it'll be six years this year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Six years this year since it was in Boston. So um obviously they were in Boston for the pre Broadway tryout. And so basically the- uh basically what that is is like they try it out with an audience and they're still making changes um up until obviously the Broadway previews and then they freeze the show and then opening. Um but yeah, this is just kind of like test it out with the audience, get some reviews, see what people like, see what people don't like. If any like the directors want to make any changes, um, just you know figuring out what works, what doesn't, making sure that it's Broadway ready for opening night. So with that, so what? would you have liked to have seen to be left in the Boston production? Oh man. Um it's been and a the while Boston since sorry I've... from Boston to Broadway. Yeah. So it's been a while since I've seen it. Funny story. Uh my friend and I were looking to just kind of 
kind of see maybe one little scene uh from the show um and we ended up finding the the Boston run um and I didn't realize it until I saw Rhythm of the Night and I was like they should have kept that number in so good high energy it was in the opening and I mean I like the opening as it is but that song was so much fun <laughs> and it seemed like so much fun as well um to do the choreography was insane um and I just I love that number I love it I agree. Um, Rhythm of the Night was so good. <laughs> um, that song is always stuck in my head too <laughs> that song's a great song. Um, another one that should I think from the movie to Broadway, I wish happened. Um, no, Rhythm of the Night was great. Um, I think I agree with you on opening. I think Rhythm of the Night was definitely. one that I wish had stayed don't get me wrong I love um the whole burning down the house that's great too but I think Rhythm of the Night always has a special place in my heart um I really really liked <laughs> this is so stupid okay so anyone knows me knows I'm a dookie stan right forever and always um I really love in Boston They made the Duke, I feel like he, they made him meaner and he was a lot more like mean. And I like that. Also, Only Girl in Material World in Boston was like absolutely phenomenal. Like the way they they did it and it felt more like a, it was more like a threat than anything. It was more like a, um, he was kind of threatening her a little bit. Mm hmm Which it says in the script that he does, but it's 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 so great and um yeah, ten out of ten. Wish they kept that one in. Only go was great. Yeah, I mean, I I think they did their best with it. Um, you do kind of get a little bit of a threatening sense, uh, with the with the choreo and the staging, but yeah, for sure. Um, I think it's like it's interesting because, like, going back to the movie, the movie again, Duke does not have game, um, and they make him have game in the Broadway show, um. But it's, it's kind of like, I don't know, he's just, he's a little too charming at some points. Like, he's a little too charming, and just to see him actually be threatening and mean, um, you know, it adds just another layer, you know? Um, maybe that's why we're Team Duke, is because he's a little bit too charming. <laughs> Yeah, they, they really made him less mean for the Broadway production. I was like, damn. They really Um, only have that, like, you know, it's like that one scene with Nini telling Satine, like, hey, he's dangerous because he did this. And in the one scene, allegedly. allegedly, which is alleged, and then he just says those things of, like, I will slit his throat ear to ear, and, you know, that that scene is scary. <laughs> that's scary, Duke. But that's, like, the only scene where he's, like, actually threatening. Yeah, I feel like um I feel like if you watch it you can definitely see that the duke seems more meaner and intimidating. Um and I think they kind of made him a little less intimidating for Broadway. Um so speaking on that, I miss the storyline of that Christian was a supposed murderer. <laughs> that was such a Yeah, good storyline. it's... Um And if anyone doesn't know, they talked about it on a live. Uh, Ricky, Tam, and Aaron talked about how um, Christian was a murderer and the Duke knew. Um, I would have liked bring to see back that Christian play the murderer. out. Let's, you know, Christian the murderer, bring him back. Um, what a great, great plot twist. Didn't expect that one coming. Um, Because <laughs> he's such I like a golden retriever. He's You a very don't golden expect retriever. it in general. <laughs> Um, I think, yeah, there's, there's also some dialogue, I think, in the Boston previews that I wish was back in. Um, however, 
on to the negative. What changes did you like? So obviously the changes from Boston to Broadway. Was there any changes that you did like? I'm going to start and say that I didn't love Shake It Out. I'm sorry. So many people are going to come after me. <laughs> I just didn't love it. Um, so I'm kind of glad they took it out. It would be nice. It would have been nice to have like a song between the Lady M's, Eric, Eric. That's not Zidler. E groove. <laughs> e groove. E groove have his own song. Um, Can he just Tatine? do a one man show? Right. Um, to have their own song, but I just didn't think Shake It Out worked personally. It just didn't work for me. But that's just my opinion. Yeah, it's a lovely song. It's a great song. Um, don't they sing it on Glee too? Which is, I think they yes. do. Yeah, yeah, they sing it on Glee, and I mean that that scene in Glee is amazing. But like, it's just yeah, it's a really great song. But in the context of the show, um, I mean, it might drive the. It doesn't really. I don't think it really drives the plot. I mean, it's a very sincere moment, but like. I, um, yeah, I just don't think it moves the plot very well. So, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Did you like the change they did to Chandelier? Because in Chandelier in Boston, there was, like, so many different green fairies. Oh, yeah. And, like, it was only um, Toulouse, Santiago, and Christian on stage, and then the green fairies. And obviously they changed it for Broadway. There's only one green fairy and it's a teen. And they also have like Zidler and Pierre and Arabia and Lachoc is all on stage as well. So they definitely change up Chandelier and I think that's a 50-50 for me because I love the song. But I like that they brought more people on stage and didn't have the many sateen, like the many different um green fairies because I was like, oh my god, where are all these people coming from? It, I was so confused the first time I watched it. I was like, I, he's drinking absinthe, you know? I mean, a lot of things He's probably thinking the same absinthe. thing. What the heck is happening? Why am I envisioning the green fairies? Um, or the Satina as the green fairy? Um, no, but yeah, I would say I'm also 50-50 on that. I think, I mean as a as a dancer coming from a dancer i feel like that that was like it was a great addition um and that is a fantasy scene as well as i said he's drinking absinthe so i think it would have been it honestly would have shown the a little bit of the delusion um you know under the influence a little bit more you know you're seeing double you're seeing things so you don't know which one is satine or which one you should go after um, and he's envisioning this green fairy in general. Like, the green fairy isn't real. It's just, <laughs> he's hallucinating it. Um, so I feel like it gives off a little bit more of that hallucination. Uh, but I also really do, oh, I love the choreography in Broadway show. I love the cat and mouse game and the way that the characters are holding him back. But he's pushing through to get to the green fairy because he's the only one who envisions it and sees it and she slips through his arms i was gonna say fingers but it's more of his arms and mama mia reference <laughs> slipping through my fingers oh i love that God. scene um but yeah i i'm also 50 50 on that i think it would have been cool either way that scene is just it's my favorite scene so i just think it's cool <laughs> That's great. Um, I think. Oh, it used to always be weird to me that um, in Come What May reprise, when they would come on stage to sing behind Christian, I remember seeing, <laughs> um, Pam. Well, the Duke would come out, and I always Wait, thought that was <laughs> the Duke would come out and sing it. Okay. Um, right, though I cool. do miss. Uh, if you know, you know, Aaron Tveit used to actually run through the aisle during come on yes come on, yeah or was it your song reprise oh my goodness i can't remember someone's gonna correct me on it and that's fine um it's one of the reprises but yes he used to run for the aisle and then i guess when they got to broadway they were like mm, maybe not they were saying that jordan fisher does that in hades town spoiler alert for hades 
I was so shocked when I saw it and I was like, what is happening? <laughs> I didn't know we did this. I was too scared. Um, there's some crazy people out there. There's some wild people out there. Um, but I wish they brought that. I wish they would do that still because I, I feel like that would have been fun. I feel like that, like going back to the movie, I feel like that kind of thing would, it would just elevate the, the theatrics a little bit. You know, how we, you know, I talked about the cinematography and how the editing like really encapsulated, you know, the love and the, um, and just the, the feeling of love. Um, I just think that, you know, it's a grand gesture like that. Um, having him run in from the aisle is just, it's just, it's such a powerful thing to do to up the theatrics, um, and make it a little bit more level match match the level of the movie with the theatrics of the movie but i think also again safety issues <laughs> probably a lot of just you know making sure i mean i know aaron loves to because he said in a q a that he wanted to um do like a corkscrew like a torpedo kind of a thing for the uh for the launch in bad romance and I just remember because it was with um, it was with Jackie Arnold, Jay, and uh, Tam, and all three of them were like, "No, <laughs> absolutely not. I'm not going to allow you to do that." So I will say, um, I don't miss. It's just from the movie <laughs> when the Duke tries to shoot Christian. <laughs> that just to me was just such a crazy time, and I'm like, I I don't miss that. <laughs> like I, I said, not... as well as much as I would have loved the scene that action and just the, the running around and chasing each other i'm also glad they didn't have that yeah that would have been um i just don't know how they would have done it yeah i i, I agree i think that would have been a tip, difficult one to do but i just remember when i watched the movie and he tries to shoot <laughs> christian and then howard zealer punches him in the face i'm like mm, like that um or when lechoc if you don't know in the movie, La Choc was actually played by a man mm -hmm. in the movie. And he punches the Duke in the face. <laughs> so good. It's so Brilliant. good. I wish they would, like, no offense to the Duke. I love the Duke, but that would have been so funny if they brought <laughs> that one to Broadway. Just to see Jackie. Just be like, pow! I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I sometimes I wish they would have just, like, just change it for one show and one show only. Just for the the fun of it. <laughs> Poor Dookie. Poor Dookie, but like also I would love to see because obviously it would be like a combat stage fight kind of a thing. I would love to see how much whoever plays the Duke would up the theatrics in their acting in the mm. reaction of the of the punch. <laughs> That'd be so great. <laughs> like, um that's all my questions I have for today, actually. Yeah. Um, a little bit of a shorter episode, and that's absolutely fine. But we wanted to talk about our different thoughts of the all different versions. Um, oh, and still, real quick, bring back my backflip. Um, <laughs> oh, true. Broadway, true. bring it back. Um, I think I saw it in August 2019, and then they took it out. Never again. Uh, they took it out. I think recently, like in the last year, I want to say they did it. I think it was when Aaron Tate returned. Um, Lita's infamous return. Was he like nah? He was like I. I don't know. Maybe he was just like nah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> um, yeah, and I don't blame him. Speaking of Aaron Tate, Sweeney for him starts soon. Really exciting for him. Um, I think it's like eighteen days. I have no idea. Look at him going back. A lot of people are saying that he should come back on Tuesdays to do Christian when Sweeney's not uh, playing. Uh, yeah, that and would be kind of fun. That would be chaos. That would be chaos. Absolute chaos. Um, also, in other Broadway news, uh, we mentioned Liv Cece is leaving the Rouge on the 4th, but she and uh, Cara Menendez, who is a uh, also a Rouge alum, they're going to be in the heart of rock and roll with Corey Cott, who is Casey's brother. Um, Corey Cott's infamous return, or not infamous, uh, famous return to Broadway. Um, and 
it's gonna be exciting it, it's gonna be great um I think that's going to be an interesting show. I actually have enough. I have no idea about the show. So I kind of like going to shows a little blind. Mm. I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. That's always one of my favorite things. Um, there's so many good shows coming out this year. I'm Water for Elephants. with Water for the Elephants is going to be the great. The one and only I Grant hope... Gustin making his Broadway debut. Any Warblers fans out there? Um <laughs> Darren is also in Little Shop. He's going to be starting Little Shop. So with we'll Evan have, Rachel Wood. Which we will have two warblers. Um, well, one off Broadway, one on Broadway, but two warblers in professional theater uh, productions. Um, Lola from The Summer I Turned Pretty is mm. going to be in Hades Town, um, the new Eurydice. Um, fun, funny because uh, Chris Briney. He plays Conrad, Connie. Um, <laughs> he is in Mean Girls. Uh, he does not sing in the movie, but he, I think they learned from Cameron Dallas, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but he is a very pretty face and uh, is a great actor. So. I thought Broadway stuff's going. Um, yeah. Uh, I said Gatsby. I am so ready for Gatsby. Hades Town, yeah, new casting. Betty Who is leaving. I loved her. Um, so much great casting going on. So much great stuff on Broadway. So um go check out Broadway, you guys. You know, the notebook is opening with uh Rouge alumni uh John Cardoza. Oh, his Roxanne is still living rent free in my mind. Uh that opens pretty soon. I think in yeah. like three weeks. Yeah. So, um, well, preview start in three weeks. So get yourself to go see the Notebook too. So um, much to see. The Wiz is, the Wiz is making a comeback. <laughs> Keith Peter, um, uh, Rouge alumni Maya Bowles. Bowles. Yeah. I can't pronounce it. Oh my goodness! I'm so sorry. Is is in the Wiz? Yeah. She is in That's the Wiz. Exciting. Um, what else? What other Rouge alumni can we talk about? <laughs> Trying to see. Uh, I think I know only... Fred from the original cast of Rouge is going to be in the Heart of Rock and Roll with Liv and yes. Kara. Yes, he is. He is going to be in that too. So that's free Rouge alum in one My... singular show. Oh, um, Sunset Boulevard, not Rouge alum, but Sunset Boulevard is coming to Broadway. It is St. James Theater. So is I Cabaret. Already... Cabaret is. Cabaret. Oh, well, yeah, David, David Marino is going to Cabaret. That opens at the August Wilson. That That's uh, April. Yeah. I think, and Eddie Redmayne's going to be in there. Any Les Mis fans would love that. Um, Les Mis and other things. <laughs> He's been in a lot. And then I'm excited to see what uh, a lot of other people are going to do next, like Eric and Casey, and I guess we shall see. I and wonder we'll if Casey's gonna call, go back to like TV, or if he's gonna stick around with Broadway. Maybe, maybe he likes it. He seemed like he really enjoys Moulin Rouge, so maybe. Um, well, Riverdale's over now, so I'm like, who? What's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? It's a guessing game. Um, I love to see what people are gonna do because you never know, and to me, it's exciting. But yeah. That's I think we've covered everything yeah. for this episode. Thank you for listening. Thank yeah. you guys so much. And we will be back next week with a brand new episode. For a new episode. Alrighty. Bye. Bye. Bye.